Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sandeep Badan. So today I'm going to discuss certain questions on the lower limb topics. Let us start the discussion. This is question number one. A patient complains of weakness when she extends thigh and rotates laterally. So these two actions should be there for the muscle, right? Let us look at the actions of these muscles. Obturator externus. It does the lateral rotation, but does it extend? No. Tensor facial lata along with uh, you can say two muscles that is gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. These three muscles are having common nerve supply that is they all are these three are supplied by superior gluteal nerve and together they are doing the powerful abduction and powerful medial rotation. Gluteus maximus is the chief extensor so it will be doing the extension in case of more forces required like going uphill climbing the stairs but as per the fibers it has the tendency to do abduction and lateral rotation also so overall if you look at the combination of the action extension abduction and lateral rotation can be taken but semi tendinosus is the hip extensor on the regular basis and the knee flexor so it can justify the hip flexion uh, hip extension Obturator extensors can justify the lateral rotation, but both of them can be justified by gluteus maximus. That will be the, our answer, right? Next question, if you pay attention, there's a history of fall and a elderly patient. Anyway, we suspect the fracture of neck of femur to, uh, uh, you can say, proper di for the proper diagnosis, we have been given one x-ray and you can see the fracture of neck of femur is there. This part is supplied by retinacular vessels. And retinocular vessels are contributed by two arteries, medial circumflex femoral and lateral circumflex femoral. But who is the dominant one? Medial circumflex femoral. B is the answer. Next question. What structure lies midway between AS, IS and pubic symphysis? That is the mid inguinal point. So here answer will be femoral artery. So we are looking at B femoral artery. Why? Because if you see, this is the sartorius over here, this is the adductor longus, this will be the gracilis. So this is the femoral triangle where we have van structure, vein, artery, nerve. Van will be from medial to lateral, although nerve will be outside the femoral sheath, but it will be in the lateral aspect, okay? Next question, some history is given and the bulge will be there below the inguinal ligament and just lateral to the pubic tubercle. So this particular part, it is nothing but the femoral hernia and femoral hernia occurs in the medial most aspect of the femoral sheath. So when we look at the femoral sheath over here, medial most aspect is actually kind of empty. Only lymph nodes are present. So it's a uh, potential area for herniation. And if hernia occurs, it will be called as femoral hernia. And look at the femoral sheath. Just as, as I, I was describing van, vein, artery and nerve. Nerve we can see is outside the sheath. Within the sheath, we have the vein, we have artery, and this is the site for femoral hernia. But the question is, who will be just lateral to the bulge? That will be femoral vein. C will be our answer. Next question, myralgia. Now, there are two conditions, chiralgia, myralgia. We say cheers with hands. So, chiralgia occurs in the upper limb. Uh, and which nerve is involved? Superficial branch of radial nerve in the anatomical snuff box. But myralgia is because of lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh. And which is nothing but a branch of lumbar plexus. Here you can see it is present in the upper part of the femoral triangle. If it gets compressed because of any reason, it will lead to burning or all the neural compression features in the outer thigh, which is called as myralgia. Here we can uh, quickly uh, revise this part. This is a sacrum. This is, are the, these are the lumbar vertebrae. And over here we can see that we have this is the iliacus muscle and by the side of the vertebra this is the swas major and together this will come as ilio swas what are the nerves this is the t12 nerve subcostal this is ilio hypogastric this will be ilio inguinal now please pay attention one nerve is cut over here why this nerve is the one which is piercing the swas major genitofemoral nerve on this side we cut the muscle when we cut the muscle along with that, the nerve was also cut. That is genitofemoral nerve. This is the nerve of myralgia, laticutinous nerve of thigh. This thick is the femoral nerve. And the one which is passing through the obturator foramen will be obturator nerve. Alright, let's move on. 
Structure passing through the marked foramen. What is the marked foramen? Greater sciatic foramen and we can see the sciatic nerve coming from here, the piriformis muscle over here. We can also see the pudendal nerve which is winding around and coming like this. Because there are three structures which will be passing through both the foramens, greater sciatic as well as the lesser sciatic foramen and those are PIN, P for pudendal nerve, I for internal pudendal vessel and what is N? Nerve to obturator internus, not the tendon. Please remember nerve to obturator internus will be passing from greater as well as lesser sciatic both but the tendon will be passing only through the lesser sciatic foramen. That's why B will be our answer. Now the patient received the injection and now when he is trying to stand on the left foot that means right foot is off of the ground, right hip is dropping. When the right hip is dropping, my first question is where is the weakness on the left side or on the right side? It has to be on the left side. So he received the injection in the left buttock because it was the duty of the left sided muscles to maintain balance on the right side. Okay. Next where he has received the injection by mistake, it is superior medial because Superior lateral is where we should give, but by mistake he received in the superior medial and that's why chances are there that nerve is injured and this test Tendenberg sign is positive. This is a very important topic. Almost every exam there is a question. And if in case of unilateral involvement, yes, tell me what's the name of the gate? Lurching. What happens in case of bilateral? Waddling, right? Now gluteus maximus has been reflected and the medius has been marked over here. What is the nerve supply? I told you gluteus medius, gluteus minimus and tensor fascia lata. These three are having common nerve supply, superior gluteal nerve and common action, abduction and medial rotation. Next question. Now the patient shows a clot in the popliteal artery. This is a logical question. Popliteal artery gives these branches anterior tibial, posterior tibial and peroneal. If at all popliteal artery is blocked, these three will be automatically blocked. An answer will be lateral circumflex femoral, which is a branch of some proximal artery from the profunda femoris artery. It's a branch of profunda femoris. And that by, this will be making the anastomosis and through the anastomosis, it will somehow maintain the collaterals. So here you can see the pop popliteal artery, right, which is giving anterior tibial, posterior tibial, posterior tibial is giving peroneal artery, sometime peroneal can be direct branch of popliteal also, but if at all there is a blockade here, all these will be losing the blood supply, isn't it? Next question, the femur is fractured. This bone, the broken end will enter the popliteal fossa. And who is at the highest risk of injury because of the position deepest? That is popliteal artery because popliteal artery is just next to the bone. Okay, let me show you this picture. It gives, gives you the clear orientation. Artery is the deepest towards the bone. Just superficial to it, we have the vein. And further superficial, we have the nerve. Which nerve? We have the sciatic nerve which divides here into two branches, tibial and the common peroneal division. Common peroneal will wind around the neck of fibula and then it further divides into superficial peroneal and deep peroneal nerve. Next question, a knife wound penetrates the superficial vein. Now, among these, only these two are the superficial vein, peroneal and posterior tibial, they are example of deep veins. Bleeding occurs from which of the vessel, the one which should terminate into popliteal. So great saphenous terminates into femoral that cannot be our answer. Short saphenous vein is the one which is the answer over here. Here you can see we have two superficial veins. This one short saphenous, this one great saphenous. Rest all like femoral, popliteal which are the counterpart of the arteries. These are deep veins. And if I show you this is the medial vein which remains medial leg, medial thigh ends in the femoral only behind knee accompanied by saphenous nerve. This is great saphenous vein. Short saphenous vein, it begins in the lateral but does not run in the lateral. Rather, it runs in the posterior of the leg and terminates in the popliteal fossa and into the popliteal vein. And it will be accompanied by this nerve that is sural nerve. Now, this particular question, the patient, the person, you need not be patient, now you have patient. It's okay. Sits up from the supine position without using hands. So what movement is happening? Hip flexion. So we are looking at hip flexor. Answer will be swas major, but why? Let me explain. See, suppose this is the supine position, right? When I say there is a flexion of the hip joint, it can occur in this direction also, yes. So what is happening? The legs are moving up, 
these legs are moving up and the person remains on the position and there's a flexion of the hip but if it occurs in reverse order then the legs remain on the same side and the person is getting up and this direction it is happening but action is same hip flexion so we are looking at a muscle which is coming from the vertebrae up to the lower limb this will be swas major and the chief flexor is iliopsoas when in some people common fibular nerve now fibular word is exactly equal to peroneal so common peroneal is equal to common fibular adductor magnus is the one which is supplied by two nerves tibial division as well as obturator nerve gluteus maximus is supplied by inferior gluteal nerve this is supplied by tibial division of the sciatic nerve but it has got two heads long head and short head long head by the tibial division short head by the common peroneal nerve this is the part which will be affected b is the answer now neck of the fibula i told you the common peroneal nerve will be winding around it loss of plantar flexion plantar flexion will be this way in the sole which is in continuity with the posterior of the leg loss of sensation from the sole again we are looking at the tibial nerve for both these triceps surae is also in the posterior of the leg so these three a b c is possible in case of injury to tibial nerve but which nerve is gone here common peroneal nerve foot drop specific answer for the foot drop should be deep peroneal but yes common peroneal nerve can be the answer in fact clinically deep peroneal nerve individually getting injured is very less even though it's a specific answer but more commonly it will be because of common peroneal nerve involvement now something has been marked this area so whenever we talk about either sole or you can say plantar aspect or the dorsal aspect medial and lateral is fixed medial is the saphenous nerve it is fixed on both the aspects and lateral is sural this is also fixed but this is tibial this will be medial plantar nerve and lateral plantar nerve these are the branches of tibial nerve only now the lateral plantar nerve will supply which one of these so we need not remember all the sole muscles now supply only four is sufficient those four will be supplied by medial plantar rest all will be supplied by lateral plantar so first lumbrical flexor hallucis brevis and the abductor hallucis along with flexor digitorum brevis these four muscles will be supplied by medial plantar nerve but other than this first interossei or any other interossei or other than the first lumbrical second third fourth whatever all will be supplied by lateral plantar now so let me just show you this picture you can see medial plantar is supplying only these four muscles which we have learned rest all are supplied by lateral plantar nerve so that was all dear friends thank you so much just be in touch and i'll be happy to meet you guys across on the other side and i'm sure that you're going to crack this exam this time god bless you all thank you